This is my current resume, but it didn't always look like this. Over the last six years, I've made many changes, and in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the exact resume and portfolio I used to land my current structural engineering job in a buildings team. So if you're looking to make a resume for the first time or upgrade your existing one, make sure you watch this video to the end because if you follow the exact process I outline in this video, you won't have to make several beginner useless resumes like I did, and you'll be able to go straight to creating a resume that actually lends you a job. All right, so first up, let's talk about the layout. My current resume is only one page long and is broken down into five different sections. The title block, skills, projects, education, and experience. Personally, I like to structure my resume in a two column format, but if you wanna go with one column, that's totally fine too. There's no particular benefit to either, so don't stress too much about the layout at the start. Once you've filled in all these different sections, you can muck around with things and just do whatever fits your information better. Now, the title block on my resume is pretty straightforward. Here, I've just got my name, title, the name of the university I went to, and also some contact info. All this stuff is pretty self-explanatory, so let's move on and jump straight into my skills section. In this section, I've broken my skills up under two different subheadings. I've got structural and software. Potentially, you might want to add more later, but I think this is a good starting place. Throughout this section, I've tried to include and highlight as many key skills that someone who is wanting a graduate structural engineering role should have. If you're unsure about what key skills you should be including on your resume for different types of roles, what you can do is go to somewhere like LinkedIn, search up the job, and then go to the job description, and then quickly you should be able to identify what these key skills are. In my role, some of the key skills that I found and included on my resume were things like structural analysis models, effective communication, space gas, strand seven, and finite element analysis. One thing I do wanna point out here is that I'm not just listing skills by themselves, but I'm also trying to give a brief description of where I've used that skill. For example, I wrote producing structural analysis models from architectural drawings prioritizing tasks to meet project deadlines, and space gas used on various projects involving design and analysis of steel frame structures. Personally, I think that having a list of skills without any sort of description is pretty pointless because as a reader, I know that I find it hard to believe that the person actually has that skill without at least just getting a little bit more information. Also, one more thing that I wanna point out before we move on is that for every skill that I've listed in this section, somewhere later on in my resume, whether it be in my experience section or in my portfolio, I do find further try and prove that I actually have this skill. That's just something to keep in the back of your mind as we go through the rest of my resume and when you're making yours. All right, moving on, the next section is projects. The projects that I've included here are the ones that I worked on while at university. And as you can see, I've kept this part of my resume really short. Now I have done this deliberately because in my portfolio, I do go into a lot more detail about these projects and I didn't wanna be repeating myself in this section. Potentially a better title for this section is actually university projects because I don't actually talk about any projects that I worked on during any internships or graduate jobs, so maybe that's something to think about when you make your resume. Okay, and the next section is education. This section of my resume is also pretty simple, and here I've just got the name of the university I graduated from, the name of the degree I did, the time frame that I was there, and then in the couple of dot points below, I've just highlighted a few of my academic achievements. Now, obviously, if you've done a bachelor's degree and then you've gone on to do further study and you've done a master's or a PhD, you should definitely include this stuff in your education section, but something you definitely should not include is your high school education. I think it's pretty safe to assume that if you've done a bachelor's degree, you probably graduated from high school, and even if you didn't, you would have done a bridging course before going to university. This particular level of education isn't something that's unique or is gonna make you stand out, so don't let it take up any space on your resume. All right, next let's move on to arguably the most important section of my resume, experience. In this section, I've got three different experiences, and I've put them in chronological order with my most recent at the top. For each experience, I've included the company name, my job type, title, the location, and also the duration that I was there. Then under each of these titles, I've included a few dot points that describe what I did, how I did it, and where I could, what the result was. Now, how I go about deciding what dot points to put on my resume is by following a three-step process. First, I make a list of important structural engineering skills. To make this list, again, I would be going to LinkedIn and looking up structural engineering roles, and then noting down all the skills that they are wanting. This includes things like steel design, FEA, strand seven, site experience, etc. Second, I highlight the skills that I know I have. Third, I turn each skill into a dot point that I can add to my resume. For example, you can turn keywords like steel design, hand calculations, and space gas into a dot point by saying, use space gas to design a series of steel portal frames and verified model outputs through hand calculation methods. As another example, we can also combine design code knowledge, concrete design, and calculation report into a dot point. And here we can say that we conducted wind design calculations in accordance
accordance with AS1170.2 and systematically documented the concrete wall design results for review. If you do have multiple experiences on your resume, try and distribute your dot points somewhat evenly between each of your roles and make sure that you don't repeat any of your skills or dot points as you want to try and showcase as many skills as you can. Also, as an intern or a young engineer, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to be able to include all the different skills that the job description is asking for, so don't worry if you can't include them all. Alright, now this process works if you've done a few internships or you've had a few jobs, but what do you do if you've got no engineering experience? Well, in my opinion, the best thing that you can do is highlight the experience you've gotten from either your university projects or from your personal projects. A university project is something that you worked on for an assessment item while at uni, and maybe this was even a group project. A personal project on the other hand is something that you've worked on on your own time and it was either done for learning purposes or for something to put on your resume. If you are struggling with inspiration for what sort of things you should do your personal projects on, one way to come up with a few ideas is to again check engineering job descriptions. If the company you want to work for designs a lot of steel structures, you could try and design a small steel warehouse. Likewise, if the company you want to work for designs a lot of concrete structures, you could try and design a few concrete elements like a wall, a slab or a beam. For either of these examples, I would do both hand calculations and also use some sort of software. That way you're able to gain multiple skills and also able to add a bunch of those keywords that these job descriptions are looking for. For the two column style of resume that I use, what this would end up looking like is getting rid of the experience section, a much bigger project section, and then slightly expanding the skills and education sections. All right, and next is my portfolio. If you haven't made a portfolio before, this is something you should seriously consider doing because especially in the civil engineering field, this is something that's really going to make you stand out. What makes a portfolio really special is that instead of just describing your skills like you do on your resume, a portfolio really paints a picture and allows you to show your work and explain things in a lot more detail. Now I won't be going through my portfolio in detail in this video because I've done that in another video, but what I will do is summarize it. So for each project I included about three images. With these images I try to have a bit of variation and include screenshots from architectural drawings as well as analysis programs and also hand sketches. Under each set of images, I've explained in a couple of dot points what I had to do, how I did it, and where I could, what the results were. When you make your portfolio, if you have any photos from site, I think it would be really good to include them here too, so you can show a bit of a project timeline. I think if you could have one photo of an architectural drawing or some sort of sketch, one photo of an analysis model, and then one photo of the thing being built, this would be a really good layout. Obviously, if you're not able to get any site photos, that's totally fine too, just use what you have. Anyways, I hope you learned something from this video, and if if you did enjoy it, you might like this video here where I take you through how to make a structural engineering portfolio in a lot more detail, or that video there where I take you through what it's really like to work at a small company as a structural engineer. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.